Hey everybody. Okay. I can't. The camera's like. <laughs> it's a wonder I'm not late. <laughs> anyway, hi. Hello. How are you? Um, happy Friday. Hopefully. Uh, <laughs> happy. As well as as happy as can be expected Friday. Um, it's dark it's so dark and so I am I'm yeah it's that season it's the season where I complain about the light I had to turn the lights off behind my desk because they flash and then there's a light behind the camera that's my desk lamp and I have it turned way up but it's still kind of dark and I don't have my glasses on because the the lamps reflecting off the glasses and they just look like little headlights <laughs> so yeah i thought you know that would look a little weird <clears throat> i wouldn't want you to feel like you you know you're at woodstock or anything so uh i thought i would check in i know that i feast or famine right like i haven't done a video in a long time and then I did a video yesterday and now here I am again today um, just kind of I guess kind of doing like a Friday just a Friday update or a kind of a, a, a vlog is it a vlog if you just stay in one place and talk um, or do I have to like go out and film things you know or like show myself cleaning house or cooking a meal or <clears throat> doing any of those kinds of things does it count if, it, if I'm not hmm. let me know what you think about that uh, <laughs> or if it matters um, I thought that I would check in with you about one thing for sure and that is I got a comment in my video from last week um, <clears throat> asking about my expat experience or moving to the Netherlands and I had planned to do a video about that a while ago like actually months and months and months ago and then it just I never did it never manifested and I actually was like I'm not sure if people are really interested or then I wasn't sure um, but I've also gotten some offline uh, messages about being here and what is that like um and you know how how did that work and so you know while i can't address specifics for all of europe obviously um every country is different i can talk a little bit about the netherlands it's still going to be kind of anecdotal because we came here six years ago or a little over six years ago in july of 2018 so things have changed somewhat uh, you know, rules and laws shift and, you know, how, to be honest, everyone is moving to the right. Um, just hang on one second. There goes my teams. Hold on. Of course, it's after five. Okay. That was kind of vloggy. That was sort of vloggish, wasn't it? That I, I stopped the video and then I started it again because I had to do a little work it's it's five it's after five I stop at five on Friday but I had a you know I had a message to deal with anyway as I was saying uh, what was I saying um the Europe Europe and the Netherlands the Netherlands so I think you know here in the Netherlands uh, people pay very close attention to what's going on in the United States and they are very aware like they look at the news a lot and and follow they've been following the election and kind of following the aftermath i think people are feeling at least the people that i you know kind of know are feeling pretty disheartened by it uh and also think yeah that um, what, what are you doing america of course, right now, the Netherlands is not in a position to talk because 
this past year, in the last year or so, they also uh, voted in a far right party, and they have a far right party has control of the government here now. Uh, where it used to be kind of more centrist, and uh, Mark Root was kind of, he was sort of center, a little bit right, but he worked a lot with the more leftist groups. Uh, now it's all the way to the far right. And uh, party uh, PVV is the abbreviation. I can't think of the name of it off the top of my head. I'll put, I'll put the name of it and the English name underneath it. Um, but the leader of that party is Geert Wilders, and he is, uh, he's sort of, he's sort of like the Dutch Donald Trump. And uh, overall, it's a very, um, it's a very anti-immigration party. They're sort of anti-EU even. Um, he put forth a kind of a, he wanted to put forth a referendum for Nexit, uh, Netherlands exiting the EU back in 2016 when Brexit happened. He's kind of al aligned a lot with um, Marianne Le Pen in like being in France of being kind of anti-EU. So I mean there are some things that are a little disheartening but there's there are differences here as well. Like I think there are more checks and balances I think it's also very much more the Dutch way to talk and listen a lot. And I think that at times there's a, there are a lot more protests here and I think a lot of the times people are, on certain issues, the people are heard a bit more. Like for example, I don't know if you remember I told you all about the 21% VAT tax that they were going to start to levy against all entertainment, uh, and that included books. Um, there was a large protest against that, and they have tabled that for now, and they have, yeah, they've set it aside. The people have spoken, and they have, and they actually listened. So, so I don't know. And you know, the funny thing is I would say, I can't, because I can't vote here, except in local, certain local elections, I pay, I actually pay less attention. <laughs> I know it's shameful. I actually pay less attention to the politics here than I do in the US because I can still vote in the US. And I, uh, and obviously I have family and friends in the US and I am a US citizen, so you know, I want to see the country go a certain way. Uh, and here, like, yeah, I am a, I am technically a permanent EU resident. We just got our permanent residence approval at the end of October. And that means that I can live anywhere in Europe within the 37 countries that make up what's called the Schengen region. Um, and yeah, so that's a little bit more freedom and I can I could if you have questions about that I can talk a little bit about you know what we did but we're not citizens we still have our American passports and uh, we're just we just have permanent residence status for forever so yeah so if you're interested in that I could talk I could talk more about it um, and I can obviously talk about you know my personal experience so let me know what you think or you know let me know if you if you want to leave comments in the I mean questions in the comments feel free to do that I'd be happy to answer whatever you have and we can do it ad hoc like this or I could do a full video <laughs> sorry <a> full video <laughs> uh, I, I choke on the idea no I just can't seem to talk these days still. I just have that little bit of a cough left from that stupid cold. Um, what else? So I have been reading a little bit this week, not as much as I would like. I am reading Cast by Isabel Wilkerson. That is, it's fantastic. It's really, really great. But as usual, I am still reading it. I'm going to finish it. But 
I have gotten sidetracked by the novel that I picked up, which is Blacktop Wasteland by S.A. Cosby, um, which I'm also enjoying, and I'm about halfway through. And uh, I'm really liking just kind of being immersed in that and having something that's sort of a got like a quick pace to it and um, you know it's like a it's a I I really don't it's a thriller I guess is it a thriller is it a it's not a detective novel I guess it's a yeah I don't know I guess it's a thriller it's not a mystery anyway um, it's about a man his name is uh, Beauregard or Bug and he gets himself into a situation, kind of a rock and a hard place thing. He owes a lot of money. He has his own business. He has his own garage. He lives in a small rural Virginia town. And he has a wife and two kids. He has a mother, a really difficult mother who is in a, um, a nursing home and who is very ill. And he's trying to take care of everybody and he's trying to do everything that he can. Um, but he has he has a real talent like with cars he you know he can build cars he can repair anything but he also uh is a fantastic driver like he he builds these cars like these souped up cars but he also really knows how to drive the cars and it's sort of he sort of follows in his father's footsteps in that way and his father, um, his father was sort of involved in, I mean, I guess you would just say a life of crime. And essentially, at one point when uh, Bug was young, I think I want to say he was like 12 or 14, his father left. He, he said he was going to California and that he needed to leave Virginia and that he had kind of an offer that he couldn't refuse. And he went away and he's never heard from him again. And so he's not sure if his father is dead or if he's still alive out there somewhere. But he feels that he has this connection to his father. He has his father's old car, which is a, a, a Plymouth Duster that he keeps in mint condition. And it's kind of interesting because, you know, it goes into that idea of, I guess... If you're a certain kind of person, you're kind of an adrenaline junkie, but you're also somebody who's like very, very smart and you, uh, you know, are you a Beau, Bug, Beauregard, <laughs> all of his names. Uh, he's clearly somebody who is highly intelligent, really able to put together a plan, um, also gets a real adrenaline rush from the actual like execution of the plan and but he, he also is like he knows that living that life is just it, there's nothing it's, no, it's gonna be nothing but sorrow for him and for his loved ones if he continues but he just feels so drawn to it really because of what it gives back to him I mean I think he enjoys like owning his garage and working in the garage, but you know, it's working in a garage and he's, he's working on just regular problems. So he gets this opportunity or really he goes looking for an opportunity, I should say, um, to do some work, to try to get some money to pay off these debts that have piled up and that are like really starting to become a serious problem. And his wife doesn't really want him to do it. And he hooks up with this guy named Ronnie, who is, you know, your basic white redneck guy who's, you know, been in, been in jail, been out of jail, and is just kind of a, well, he's kind of adult, right? Like, he, he thinks he's much smarter than he really is. Um, but he comes, to, he comes to Bug and says, I have this opportunity. Um... We can, you know, there's, there, I'm dating this girl, and he didn't say it that way, 
<laughs> but I'm dating this girl and there are gonna be some, she works in a jewelry store and there are gonna be some diamonds moving through this jewelry store. And if we can get the diamonds, they're not, they're not like coming through it in a legitimate way. And if we can get the diamonds, then we can sell the diamonds and we can get the money. And so he has to decide, is he gonna do this? And then, you know, the story kind of goes on from there. I'm really enjoying the writing. I really like the characters. Um, it's not like a super deep book, um, but it's a broad book. Like it has a lot to it. There's a lot about family. There's a lot about, you know, ha choices that you have to make um, and that you sometimes don't want to make. There's uh, a lot about you know racism and classism and how these things affect those kinds of choices uh, so I know that when this book came out I think this came out in like 2019 I can't remember it got terrific reviews I think it was on like everybody's year-end best of list and I see why uh, because the writing's very smooth um, the pacing is excellent characterization's great so so far so good and I've been really enjoying that a bit more than I have to admit as much as I really like Wilgerson's writing and I am enjoying and learning a lot I've just been more drawn to read the novel so there's that um, the other thing that we've been doing is I've been kind of waiting for shows like I really want to watch somebody somewhere but I'm going to wait until it's finished so that I can kind of binge it. I'm also waiting for the show Shrinking to end so I can watch that one. Um, but we've been watching, and this is funny because I think Marsha mentioned this in the comments yesterday about funny books um, or books that make you laugh. And she mentioned Anthony Horowitz's Magpie Murders. So we've been watching the show Magpie Murders and thoroughly enjoying that it's kind of it's not exactly filling that um, uh, only murders in the building but it's it's kind of you know it's it's got that Agatha cute little Agatha Christie feel it's not super dark it's not super serious um, it's quite clever like in the way that they filmed it because it moves back and forth between two time periods and the way they manage that in the show, they've done a really nice job. So that's, that's been kind of, I think we've only got like two episodes of that left though. So I think we may finish that tonight. And then let's see what else I watched. Uh, I watched Wicked Little Letters. Has anybody watched that? That was really great. I watched that last weekend. Um, Olivia Coleman and I can't remember the other actress's name. But it's a story about a woman who uh, she's receiving these really almost just pornographic type letters that she's getting these letters and she accuses her neighbor of being the person who is writing these letters and basically the show is like sort of or the movie is the mystery of who is actually writing the letters. I guess it's set set after the war I think it's set just after the second world war and or is it after the first world war I'll have to look that up I can't remember um I'm thinking of the clothes it must be right out thinking of the clothes and the cars and things it's after the it's just after the first world war uh, but that was really enjoyable I kind of just watched that on a whim um when my husband my husband was out at a squash tournament and I, so I decided that I would just, you know, look for something that would carry me away. Uh, and that did, that did the job. So that was lots of fun. Uh, let's see, what else? What else? Um, yeah, November's just going by fast and I'm not reading very fast. So I don't know. <laughs> I'm not really sure even what I'm going to read uh, for the rest of the year. We're going to be traveling to Dallas for and to Florida for the holidays. So that's going to be, I always like read a couple of books on the plane, um, but that'll be like on, on Kindle. Um, I did get though, 
I did get Guide Me Home, the new Attica Lock. I'm so excited about this. I loved Bluebird, Bluebird, and oh, what was the name of the second one in the series? And I don't have my glasses on, so I can't say. I'll put it on the thing. Um, but this is the third and final book in this trilogy. I'm very sad about that. I'm going to be very sad to go away from these characters. I was thinking about reading um, the first two again before reading this, but I don't know. I think, I don't think I will, because I'll probably, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and read this, and then at some point I'll read all three of them again, because they're that good. They are that good. Uh, so if you're looking for something to kind of, uh, you know, to read a, a kind of a mystery crime, why don't I know what to call this? Why do I keep wanting to call them thrillers? And they're not really thrillers. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah. This really got right. All right. So, yeah, I think I'm out of juice this week. <laughs> but I wanted to stop in and say hi. And I wanted to talk a little bit. I guess, you know, like everybody else, I'm probably just making the connection uh, and having the community not unlike what we talked about yesterday. So, yeah, let me know what you've got going on this weekend. Let me know if you've read Blacktop Wasteland or if you have read the Attica Lock books, if you're planning to read Guide Me Home, um, what you're watching, just what you got going on. And I will, you know, look forward, hopefully, to talking with you again next week. Uh, I still am planning to do the Jennifer Haig video and talk about Mercy Street and yeah let me know if you you know have the questions about expat life or if you want me to do more of a dedicated video about that I would be happy to try to put something together depending on the questions that I get okay well I guess that's it and I hope that you have a great weekend and take care of yourselves uh, you know Get away from the news if you can. Get outside, take a walk, take a break, um, and be good to yourselves. I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.